They're the online vultures accused of preying on young Australians, illegal offshore operators who promote high-stake jackpots but trap unsuspecting players. Well, sadly, Thomas was one of them. Now his brave mum's on a crusade to help save others. Even if he was struggling silently, like so many young people are nowadays, um, you know, in today's society, you don't need that. <laughs> With every ounce of courage, Fernanda Vivas is trying to stay rational about her son's death. You don't need that to push it over the edge. Thomas was 21. He just started a locksmith apprenticeship. Yay! Fernanda manages to smile through her grief when she talks about her son. You always felt his, um, his presence. He, he was just, he was just a beautiful person. Always had a smile, had a cheeky smile on his face. To those around him, Thomas was happy. What's the hardest thing to accept, Fernanda? Um, well, that he's gone. <sighs> he was, had a haircut two days before. He put the muffler in his car, ready to sell it because his boss was going to get him a van. He had plans, you know. Sorry. There were no signs? No, no, no. They're made to keep you wanting more. This is an illegal online casino. At your fingertips, the choice of games, endless. The prizes, big. And he put $200 and he won $30,000. In one bet, everyone thought Thomas had struck the jackpot. His boss took him to a bank and opened a bank account for when he got it out. He was going to put it in for his apprenticeship. And he, was, he said to him, awesome, that's what I'll do. Within two weeks, this young man would fall from a happy-go-lucky winner to the depths of despair. I guess this also shows how quickly it can take a grip on someone's life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When he's... That was $200. You know, he wasn't a gambler as such, and that's the most frightening um, part of all of this, is the fact that he wasn't a gambler. Thomas tried everything to recover his winnings from the website Emu Casino. The gambling platform is based overseas and is illegal in Australia. In Thomas's case, a dangerous trap. He made three phone calls to the site support team which he wouldn't have been able to get through. To try and get the money out? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's no other reason why he would be ringing them. Fernanda didn't learn of Thomas's gambling binge until it was too late. He never got his winnings. Instead, in desperation, he put almost every cent back in. How much of that $30,000 did he have left? $2. And I found that out because I got into the site myself. Nobody will ever know what was going through Thomas's mind when he drove himself to these cliffs and took his own life. It will forever haunt his mother to know that her boy felt there was no other option. But she has no doubt that one sudden change in his life made it unbearable. When I found out about the money, I just, my intuition said to me, he scambled the money up there. He's completely hated himself. Shame, guilt and moment of madness. He just hated making mistakes or hated um, someone not f feeling that he's doing, he was doing the right thing. So he would just really be, you know, beat himself up. Associate Professor Dr Sally Gainsbury from the University of Sydney dedicates her research to making gambling safer. She says there are more than 2,000 sites like Emu Casino, all of them illegal in Australia. You can see that it's claiming to be Australian, but it's actually licensed in Malta and Curacao. There's even details for Australian customer support lines, and they use things, words like punt and mate, g'day, all indicating that they're appropriate for Australians, even the name itself, Emu Casino. It's illegal though. This site does not have an Australian license. What are the risks for somebody when they log on to an offshore site? 
An Australian plane and offshore gambling site is not doing anything wrong. They're not acting illegally. However, they are putting themselves at risk. The game might not be fair. The game might be rigged. Even if you do win, it might be impossible to get your money out of that site. And as an Australian using an offshore gambling site, you have no recourse. You can't complain to the police. There's nowhere you can go if you feel that the game has been rigged or you've lost your money. Australians are the world's biggest gamblers. And we pump some $600 million into illegal online casinos every year. Because it's just so accessible, there's no closing hours, you don't have to get in your car, you don't even have to get dressed. You can spend as much money as you want and if you get bored on one site, you can click your mouse and there's 2,000 more ready to take your money. Think about if you would go online shopping, would you buy from a site you don't expect to actually send you the product? The same holds true for gambling. And with some online gambling sites, players aren't just risking their money, but their identity too. If you have a big win, they make it impossible for you to get it out. And some of the terms and conditions, you need to be a lawyer to understand them. In this day and age of identity theft, if that particular site doesn't have good protections or if they're a disreputable site, they might actually sell your details to criminals, meaning that you might be the victim of identity theft in addition to losing the money to the site itself. In a statement to a current affair, the Australian Communications and Media Authority said it's investigated Emu Casino and is now proceeding with enforcement and disruption options. These include referring individuals to the Department of Home Affairs for placement on the movement alert list and notifying overseas regulators. What do you feel online gambling did to your son's life? I think pushed him over the edge. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, he'd be here. Yeah, 100%. I know that. For now, Fernanda finds some peace here. A place to think and remember. A mother in your position, Fernanda, how do, how do you come back from this? Yeah, um, bit by bit. I know, I know this is very raw and I'm crazy doing this, but something needs to be, yeah, yeah, something needs to be. Reporter Dimity Clancy joins me now and Dimity, Emu Casino contacted us overnight. What did they say? Well, we finally got some answers for Fernanda who first contacted Emu Casino more than four months ago. Even at weeks after we first contacted them, Henry from their customer support team sent us an email confirming Thomas's dealings with the online casino. They confirmed Thomas did submit all the documents required to prove his identity, things like proof he was over 18, his address and his credit card details, but they claim the documents were rejected because they were not clear enough. They said on June the 6th, the day Thomas took his life, he emailed them twice trying to retrieve his winnings. And sadly through their email we've also learnt, Layla, that Emu Casino once again rejected Thomas's documentation four days after his death. How do they justify operating in Australia illegally? Well, well, they don't. We asked many questions about operating illegally in Australia and they ignored them. We even in instigated a live chat with someone from the site. We asked three times whether they were licensed in Australia. We were told they accept Australian players. The site was licensed. When we asked by who, we were told to write to the manager. And we should also add, Layla, that Emu Casino, ha Casino has never acknowledged Thomas's death or offered their condolences. Okay, thanks very much, Dimity. And a reminder, if you or someone you know needs help, please contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. That's 131114.